I'm here with Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Peter, let's go over some of the reaction to Trump's visit to North Korea, to the DMZ, uh, specifically the, the Dem reaction, the Democrats reaction. And I'm just going to read you some tweets that I picked out, okay. Peter, and you can comment right afterwards. So let's start with Elizabeth Warren. Okay, Pocahontas. Okay, yep, Pocahontas. <laughs> Our president shouldn't be squandering American influence on photo ops and exchanging love letters with a ruthless dictator. Instead, we should be dealing with North Korea through principled diplomacy that promotes U.S. security, defends our allies, and upholds human rights. And now let's move over to Richard Blumenthal. In this bloated unreality show, the president has given the greatest democracy gold seal of approval to a murderous dictator. Trump has dramatically elevated Kim without any, sig without any signs of a strategy to reach an enforceable nuclear deal. Vague talk about talks, right, while Kim continues to develop nuclear warheads and missiles. Seems like this gigantic PR stunt entrenches and embellishes authoritarian rule without any real meaningful strategy for denuclearization. Peter, what do you make of these tweets? None of them make any sense and none of them are grounded in reality. Number one, the situation in North Korea on the, on the Korean Peninsula is not of Donald Trump's making at all. He inherited this. Number two, what difference does it make? The, what kind of regime is there? What difference does it make? Legitimize Kim's regime. He's there, okay? It's recognized internationally. You don't have to like it. Personally, I don't like it, but I'm more important in peace and stability. That is a far more important point. Now, you know, Elizabeth Warren and this uh, Richard Blumenthal, they just have political uh, scores uh, uh, in hand right now. They want to score points, okay, against Donald Trump. I am for peace. I am against war. That's a higher calling. It doesn't matter. Now, Trump's um, uh, up, uh, um, um, trip to the DMZ, uh, yes, it was very, very unorthodox. Now is time to do unorthodox things. It's time to do that. We've been grappling with this issue for decades now. Something has to change. We have to try something different. Talking never hurts. What did Churchill say? Um, uh, jaw, jaw, jaw is better than war, war, war. Okay, so we have to, uh, 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 a possible opening. Now, I've been watching this for years like you have, like our viewers here. It's never going to be easy. And if Trump thought it was going to be easy the first time round, well, he was duped into it by the circle of dupes that are around him. Now, significantly, where was John Bolton? Well, he was, was in the middle up. of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. <laughs> well, good exile. Stay there. Make him ambassador. Whatever. OK, let maybe give, give him let him, you know, uh, give him a herd of, uh, of uh, camels or whatever they've got there. OK, leave him there. OK, who was with Donald Trump at the DMZ? Oh, Tucker Carlson, apparently. At least I saw some footage there. He wasn't sit he wasn't right next to the president, but he, but he was part he was part of the delegation, from what I can understand. Now that's that's progress. That's progress in a big way. Now, why is Trump doing this? Uh, not just for a photo op. Of course, it is also for that. Let's not deny it. Um, but I think that Trump is beginning to realize, and I, he probably won't say it because he has too much pride. He has too much of an ego. But he's realized that the people that he's sur um, surrounded himself with is ill-serving him, ill-serving his administration and ill-serving his re-election uh, 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 campaign efforts. I mean, he's got a, a bunch of clowns and the Democrats running. I mean, the, oh, he's already got a foot up, okay? His mind is things are going great. The economy, at least by most indicators, I'm not, I'm not always convinced these ind indicators are always the best for the middle class. We can discuss that later. But he's got... He's got the wind to his back. The Mueller report's over. It's a dud. He's got the wind to his back. And, and now, you know, he's invested a lot in North Korea. He has to go to the next step. He has to go to the next base because he has owned it. And now it looks like after being um, uh, foiled in Syria, uh, almost went to war with Iran, uh, his crown jewel piece on the, on the uh, Korean peninsula is being foiled. He wants to take the initiative. He's taking the initiative. Uh, uh, Liz Warren and Richard Blumenthal, I could care less what they think. 
uh, because they don't have the national interest at stake. They have a political interest in stake. Okay, Trump has both the national and the political. He's playing it well. I commend the president for doing this. And everyone knows watching this and Crosstalk, I am a fierce, fierce critic of Donald Trump. And I think he's doing something wrong, particularly in foreign policy. When he does something right, I give him kudos. All right. Here's a Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, also a Democrat candidate. She told CNN State of the Union that achieving peace with North Korea will not be as easy as just going and bringing a hot dish over the fence to the dictator next door. That's Amy Klobuchar. Peter, let's play a video clip from Tim Ryan, who is also many people may not know it, but he is running for oh, uh, to, well, to he's get the, the one Democrat that was, candidate. He was the one that was humiliated Yeah, he by got Tulsi. destroyed right. okay. by Tulsi Gabbard during the, the debates. Let's roll this video with him on a Sunday Morning Futures with Maria B. Bartiromo, who's one of our favorite uh, talk show hosts. She's great. So here is Tim Ryan really, really saying some harsh stuff about Trump going to the DMZ to meet Kim. Here we go. Joining me right now is Ohio Congressman and Democratic presidential candidate Tim Ryan. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Maria. Your reaction to the president's move to the DMZ? I, I have a much different opinion than, than uh, Kevin McCarthy has. I, I think this has been the President Trump appeasement tour. I have no idea why he's shaking hands with a dictator who just uh, in May was sending missiles into the Sea of Japan. I mean, you don't reward that kind of behavior with a visit to your country from the president of the United States. There's been no progress at all. They have done nothing talking about it. It's, it is historic. But what has been done? Nothing. And, and the, the whole deal with China backing down on Huawei. Are you kidding me? What, what China's been doing uh, with cybersecurity, what Huawei's been doing all over the world, and we're going to back down. I thought that was the one piece that we could count on President Trump to hold the line on for national security purposes. Mm -hmm. And he's loosening uh, what he did. I think this is very, very dangerous. I'm, I'm very disappointed in the president. Even those of us who really disagree with him on so much thought that on the national security piece, he would at least hold the line and he, he folded like a cheap suit. Well, I think we let, let's let's w walk through this because the national security issue, uh, certainly this is a serious issue. I agree that this is something that we need to really focus on as it relates to China. But first on North Korea, um, isn't it true that before you can actually get denuclearization, you need to start with diplomacy? This is the first sitting president to ever step foot in North Korea. This is a historic moment. It is historic, no question. But for what? I mean, you, you do these meetings, uh, especially with a dictator. What progress has been made? Right. What good faith has been shown? He hasn't sent a missile into the Sea of Japan in five weeks. I mean, really? I mean, I just cannot believe I am stunned that this president, who's supposed to be Mr. Tough uh, guy, tough business guy, has absolutely no progress made. And, and it points to he wants to be on TV. He wants the historic moment. He wants the theater of it all. But nobody's uh, more safe in that region now. And, and now what, what's the incentive? You, you are literally praising yeah. a dictator who is responsible for the death of an American not too long ago yeah. for the way they held this, mm. young, this young boy. And, and, and you reward that with a visit from the president? I mean, what, are you, I just, I'm stunned. I'm wow. stunned by the whole thing. And I, I just, I, I hope... Uh, I, I don't know what to say about it. Okay, Peter. So that was Tim Ryan from well, Ohio. Uh, and just a side note, it was Bolton was it Ulan Batar. Right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. All right, All right, Peter, take it away. Well, I mean, he, this Ryan character, he's trying to um, um, make up for the, his humiliation on that stage during the debate when Tulsi Gabbard um, cor corrected him every single sentence that came out of his mouth. So, Again, this is grandstanding. Everybody wants to stand out. I mean, they're all essentially all made of the same DNA. So, I mean, it, it, they have to um, uh, um, shout out to make themselves different somehow. The more critical they are of Trump, the better they, they think. I'm not sure they, that's going to be a winning strategy. So, But we have plenty of time to talk about that. Um, look, this Ryan character, I mean, what is his expertise in foreign policy? I mean, he was humiliated on national television by a, uh, 
uh, currently serving guards um, a person, Tulsi Gabbard, the congresswoman from uh, Hawaii. Uh, so he's trying to make up ground, is making himself as some kind of foreign policy guru. Well, nobody in the Dem among the Dems are a foreign policy guru at all, not by, even by a, a long shot. Well, there's only one that really uh, knows anything about it, someone that's served, been in, uh, in theater twice, uh, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, she does, all right? So going after Trump here, I think, you know, I, I, I often use this phrase in our, our chats here, what future historians will think. Well, when the the security uh, of uh, the uh, Korean Peninsula, and then what we're talking about, what's the neighborhood here? Japan, Russia, uh, China, South Korea. Uh, the United States has uh, 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 around 30,000 troops there. It's, um, put it up to 40,000 if you add families. I mean, this is a critical um, a point um, and a place in the world that still ha has the most militarized border in the world. I think Donald Trump had a lot of courage. Uh, I know how people like to make memes and all that. I came across this morning kind of a juxtaposition. It had Trump uh, standing uh, with Kim in the DMZ, and then the, the, the second picture, the juxtaposition, was Obama behind a thick glass barrier with binoculars looking at the DMZ. I mean, where's the, where's the imagination here? Now, could this all uh, go to the wayside? Could it be all a waste of time? Sure. Yeah, that's possible. It's possible. But maybe Donald Trump learned this time you need a strategy. You need a strategy and you need to create a coalition. And Donald Trump, I'll just tell you here, you don't have to tell anyone you heard it from me, but the Russians and the Chinese already have a plan. You could embrace it. You could embrace it. And you could come out a winner too. Let everybody get a Nobel Prize. Let everyone, including Kim, I don't care who gets the credit. And remember everyone, during the greatest conflict of modern history, the Second World War, Stalin, Roosevelt, and Churchill are on the same side to, to fight and destroy the scourge of fascism in Europe. And they did. All the while, Stalin's secret police was still doing their nasty work and the gulag existed. That, that, that you don't have to uh, like or dislike a regime. You have a common goal and you work together. You can figure out other problems. That applies to Iran as well. The nuclear deal was a good deal because it achieved the purpose of the negotiations. That was a good deal. And the United States has mistakenly walked away from it. Now, I hope Donald Trump is taking this all on board because the North Koreans are looking at the U.S. position towards Iran. They've learned the lessons from Libya. It's a lot more complicated than it was when they were dealing with Libya and with, with uh, uh, Iran. The North Koreans are, are learning these lessons, and it's, it's going to be much, much more difficult to get an agreement. But it's worth the effort. It, God damn it, it's worth the effort. Good job, President Trump. Yeah, and well, the media is going to do its best to sabotage oh, this effort. So, okay. Peter, let's close it out with perhaps one of the biggest clowns in the establishment media, Jim Acosta, who uh, before a meeting with uh, Kim on Sunday, he's, he asked Trump this question. What is it with your coziness with some of these dictators and autocrats at this summit? And he was referring to Saudi Arabia's Mohammed bin Salman, Chinese President Xi Jinping, and Russian President Vladimir Putin. And Trump responded by saying, I get along with everybody. I get along with President Putin. I get along with Mohammed from Saudi Arabia. I get along with everybody except you people, actually. What do you make of that? <laughs> look, wow. look, again, um, this is uh, I'll have a neutral reaction to this. Donald Trump didn't choose these foreign leaders. They're just there. And you have to deal with them. You have to deal with Russia. At least you should. There's no doubt about it that the U.S. has to deal with China. And if you want security on the uh, Korean Peninsula and global sec uh, security, when we're talking about nu uh, nuclear proliferation, you have to deal with North Korea. All right. Um, uh, MBS, well, you have to deal with him because he's the crown prince. He's the guy. He's the guy that's calling the shots. So as much as, you know, Jim Acosta's of the world want to wish these people away. Well, that's just silliness. That just shows their low octane thinking. OK, it's a cheap shot. It doesn't take uh, uh, on board the, the political realities that are facing the U.S. OK, Donald Trump could do a lot better 
by leaving John Bolton in Mongolia and maybe have a few more calls with Pat Buchanan and Tucker Carlson. That would be my advice. And don't let this opportunity um, slip through your fingers. Uh, if you engage now and work hard, will you get a deal, a, a meaningful full deal by the time that, uh, the, of the election of next year? Probably not, but you could show some progress and maybe show a little of san a little sanity in American foreign policy because it looks rather insane to a lot of people outside the Beltway. So this would this is a um, a a movement that could actually cause some momentum. And if Trump can see some progress there, then maybe he, he will question these these Elliot Abrams and uh, Mike Pompeo's and John Bolton's. Okay, they're doing his presidency a huge disservice. You know, de-escalate when it comes to Iran. De-escalate. Show that you have, show that you're a statesman. <laughs> Just do that. Get rid of your luggage. And get on the stage. And don't be held cap uh, captive of these people because your presidency shows that. Well said, Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Maybe uh, Pompeo can join Bolton. In, uh, in the desert. They, 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 they can herd camels together. Yeah. <laughs> that's, okay. that's about yeah. all they're good for. <laughs> Absolutely. But we wouldn't want to punish the camels, would we? <laughs> ah, there you go. Okay. Oh, God. Jesus. There's always a victim here. <laughs> <There's> always... <laughs> all right. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. Follow us on SoundCloud to get an audio copy of this video. We are also on iTunes as well, so follow us there. And please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and we are now on Subscribestar. And Peter, you have a friend with you. Who is this that? Is, that's Buddy. That's Buddy. Buddy he, he has no idea who I'm talking to, and he gets but, really jealous. But, but so there's no <laughs> doubt that Buddy is telling everybody who is watching this program to go to the Duran shop and That's pick right. up okay. some Duran merchandise. And we're going to get some custom uh, shirts for this little guy. All right, and, maybe a li and, a, and a little hat. <laughs> <laughs> All our merchandise is Buddy approved. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, go to the Duran shop. The link is in the description box down below. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.